So let's just take a look at the first uh, set of equations for the system. x plus y equals 3x minus 1. And the other part of the system is x minus y is equal to 1 minus x. Now the first thing you might do is you might look and say, these do not look like lines. These look nothing like anything I've seen before. And it is true that the form of this equation doesn't quite look like standard form. And it definitely doesn't look like mx plus b form. Same thing here. But the deal is, you know that they're lines, even though I haven't put it in flashing signs, symbols for you. I mean, you know they're lines because this equation involves only x's and y's, and the only powers are, are ones. So I can combine the x terms, and I can move everything around so that I have y equals and then some x's on the other side, and I can do the same thing here. So you know that there are lines. All you have to do is just clean up the system of equations. I mean, the truth is, if we give you all the equations in uh, you know, mx plus b form, it's just too easy for you to see what's going on because you can see the slope and the y-intercept. So a lot of times you'll be given problems that look a little weird, and you have to, to start by rearranging them. So let's leave the y on this side because that's where we want them, and let's move the x to the other side. So you have 3x minus x minus 1. All I did was subtract x from the left and subtract x from the right. And when I carry out the subtraction, 3 minus 1 is 2x minus 1. Now this looks an awful lot like a line, right? So you see this equation and this one are the same thing. It's just that I've kind of made this one hard to read, for lack of a better word. And you have to clean it up a little bit. Uh, and that's going to be on you. Nobody's going to tell you everything that you need to do. So here I'm going to leave the y alone, but don't forget it's got a minus sign in front. You can't just get rid of it. Let me subtract the x over here. So I'm going to have 1 minus x from here, and then I'll subtract another x like this, and I'll carry out the subtraction in the next line. Minus x minus x is going to be minus 2x. But I have this negative sign. So I'm going to divide by negative 1. So 1 over negative 1 minus 2x over negative 1. So what do I have here? 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Now these become a positive because they're multiplied together there, so it'd be positive 2x. And then of course I'm going to switch the order here. It'll be 2x minus 1. So I get y is equal to 2x minus 1, and that's exactly what I had for the other equation over here. So without graphing anything, you know right away this is to totally different than what the, the, other, uh, the other systems of equations that we've looked at in the last section. But we did talk about um, dependent systems before. If you get your equations down to the point where you're trying to graph them and they end up being the same equation, what it means is that all of the points that are on this line satisfy this equation are the exact same set of points that are also on this line because they're the same thing. So what it means is there's an infinite number of solutions. They're all, all the points on either line is the solution to the other one because it's the same line, right? So because of that, all you really need to do is write down uh, that they're infinite solutions and because of that, it's a dependent system of equations. You can write that down. Now, just to be complete, I am going to graph it just because. So here we have negative 1 for the y-intercept. We'll do it real fast. There's negative 1. The slope is 2, which is 2 over 1. So rise over run. We go up 2 over 1. And there we go. And we can put our little straight edge in here. We're not going to be too precise. And that's what we have. So what we have, have here is if I was really going to do it properly, I would graph this line, which would be the blue line, and then I would get my purple marker out and graph this line, which would be exactly on top of that line. So every single point is common to both lines. That's why there's infinite solutions, because it's the same, it's the same line. So every point on line A is also on, point, uh, is on line B. So we call it dependent, and I mentioned this in, in a couple lessons ago. The reason we call it dependent is because it doesn't matter so much. You just need to know what it's called. But the reason is because this equation can be written in terms of this equation, by usually by multiplying and by rearranging terms. And you can see that that happened when we tried to rearrange terms and it became the same thing. So they're not independent equations. One of them is dependent on the other. It turns out that one of them is basically equal to the other one. So that's why we call it a dependent system. So let's erase and reset, and we'll do another uh, kind of weird, I call them, weird set of equations. Now, dependent systems are pretty rare in real life. I mean, a well-behaved system, like a s electric circuit or some kind of like 
like I was talking about trusses on a bridge or something, those are gonna be well-defined systems, generally. They're gonna have a solution. They're gonna be consistent. But we still have to talk about these other cases because occasionally if you run across a, a system like this, you need to really investigate it further and really, really closely because it means something is generally not right. Something is generally a little bit weird that you have to investigate further because most systems in real life shouldn't behave this way. All right, the next set of equations looks like this, 2x, uh, minus 3y is equal to 2 minus x, and the next part in the system of equations is 3x minus 2y uh, is equal to negative 2 plus y. So just like with all of these things, I mean, we cannot just look at these things and see what they're going to look like, or if they're consistent or, or inconsistent. You, you're not going to be able to do that. The only way that you can figure it out is to graph them and then see what they look like. So let's rearrange the terms, get them into a form we can graph, and then we can compare. So we're going to leave the y over here, but it has a negative sign, so we have to leave it as negative 3y. We'll subtract the 2x, meaning we're going to bring it over to the other side. So we have 2 minus x minus the 2x from the other side. Now let's clean up the terms. Uh, so we'll have 2, what is minus x minus 2y? I'm sorry, minus x minus 2x, so we have minus 3x. In other words, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And so then what we're going to have now is we'll divide by this. So we'll have the first term divided by negative 3 minus the second term divided by negative 3. So we will have negative 2 thirds. This makes a positive because they're multiplied. Uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so it's x. So really we'll put the x first as we always do, so it's x minus 2 thirds. So what do we have? mx plus b. So this is the y-intercept. This is the slope term that we have. And we'll leave that alone for a minute while we go off and take a look at what the second equation is doing. Now what we have to do here, this one's a little bit different because notice here we had x and x and we only had one y term. Here we actually have two y terms. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually move this y over to the left. So leave the x's alone, minus 2y. We'll subtract this y like this. So we have to subtract y from the right and also subtract it from the left. So what we will have is 3x minus 3y is negative 2. Now we'll take the x term and move it over. So we have negative 3y, negative 2, minus 3x. Whoops, you can already see it's starting, it's the same thing already. Let's go ahead and get it all the way down, but when you get to this point you can see that you're already getting, you're already recovering the same steps again. So y will be negative 2 over negative 3, minus 3x over negative 3. So what we'll have here you know what, I actually, I actually thought about editing this little comment I made out, but it's, I think it's important to show you that I'm human too, I'm not a robot. So when I looked at this, I was like, oh, this looks very close to this, it's, all, it's gonna be the same thing. But I didn't look carefully enough. Negative three y is the same, but this is a negative two, here's a positive two. These are actually not the same thing. So when I divide by three, I get this, when I divide by three, I get this. So what I'm gonna have is actually uh, two thirds on the left because it's positive, this becomes positive and then it'll be x, 3 divided by 3. So if I move the x term up, it'll be x plus 2 thirds. Now they are very similar, but this is not the same as this. They are different. But what do you notice about them? That's the same. The y-intercepts are different, true. But take a look at the slope. The slope here is 1. The slope here is also 1. So that means, remember, if the two slopes of two lines are the same, then they're parallel and they never intersect, no matter what the rest of the equation looks like. So let's take a look just to verify that for ourselves. Negative two-thirds is the y-intercept with a slope of one. Negative two-thirds, this is negative one, so negative two-thirds is somewhere right around there. A slope of one means I go up one to about there and over one to right around there. So I will do my best to draw this line. It's not going to be perfect, but I'll do my best to just draw something reasonably straight. So there's the first line. Now the second line has a slope of positive two-thirds, also with the same slope of one. Positive two-thirds is somewhere up here, not quite to one. But a slope of one means you go up one and over to the right one, which means somewhere around there is going to be that secondary point. So I think you can kind of all see where this is going. The lines are going to be, as best I can draw them anyway, parallel. They're never going to touch. The slopes are the same, but because the y-intercepts are different, uh, that just means they're parallel lines that are never going to touch. So because these lines never touch, there's no intersection point. All you have to write is say that there's no solution. And then also if you're asked, you can also say it's an inconsistent 
system. Inconsistent system. So consistent means there is a solution. They cross. Inconsistent means they don't. Obviously, it's fairly rare to come up with two lines in a real system, of like solving some forces on a bridge or whatever, that has no solution. I mean, that's, that's something you don't want to have. You always want to find solutions to your problems, right? So you can figure out what's going on. In real life, if you wrote a system of equations for a circuit, you know, like the currents and the voltages all over a circuit, you might have even more than two equations. You might have a larger system, we're going to talk about larger systems of equations later, where they're not, not just x and y, there could be other variables and extra equations. Okay, but if I get down to the point where I don't have any kind of intersection point, no solution, then I can't solve my problem. Something is wrong with what I'm trying to do. M maybe it's impossible. Maybe it's impossible to build a machine to do what I'm trying to do. Maybe that's why I don't have a solution. That kind of stuff is what you're looking for. Maybe I can't build a perpetual motion machine, which, by the way, you can't. Right? So now we're going to erase this and reset for our last problem here where we're graphing systems of equations. Okay, for our last one, here we go. We have x plus y is equal to 3, and we have x minus y is equal to 4. We have two sets of equations, we have two equations, and we're going to try to see if they're consistent, inconsistent, or dependent on each other. So let's solve for y. We have to just move x to the other side by subtraction. That's easy enough, it's already done. We just subtract x from both sides. Now here, we're going to move x, so we'll have negative x plus 4. But then now we have to divide by the negative 1 plus 4 over negative 1. So here we have dividing by negative 1 gives us positive x minus 4. This division gives us negative. So what we have over here is two equations, negative x plus 3 and x uh, minus 4. Now this guy has a, uh, let's just write it down just for completeness. So this uh, slope, well, not x, the slope is negative 1. The y-intercept is 3. Here the slope is positive 1 and the y-intercept is negative 4. So right away we can tell that these are not parallel lines. Okay, so maybe they're not, maybe there's no problem, maybe it does have a solution, let's, start, let's check it out. y-intercept of 3, y-intercept of 3 means it's going to be up here at 3, and this guy has a slope of negative 1, which again, just to remind you, is negative 1 over 1, so it's rise down, run to the right, one time each, so one down, one to the right, and then so what we're going to get is something, I'm trying to do it as accurate as I can, let's see here, yeah, that's about as close as I can get it, all right, something like that. So this is line number one, and now let's quickly graph line number two and see what we get. Line number two has a y-intercept of negative 4. That's way down here in negative 4. And the slope of 1, which is 1 over 1, which goes up 1 over 1, which means it's going to be right here, something like this. All right? So what I'm going to have is something like this. All right. So the reason I chose this one last uh, is for, I think, a good reason. Because you can see clearly there's an intersection point here. And you want to read off what is this intersection point. But the problem is this intersection point is not on my grid lines. And all the other problems I've done with graphing, I've chosen them carefully. So the solution is like 1, 2 or 3, 1 or whatever. But if your intersection point is not on a grid line, then you have to just read it off as best you can. So you know this is 1, 2, 3, and this is 4. So it's somewhere between 3 and 4, and it looks to be right in the middle of 3 and 4. So we could say it's 3 and a half, right? And then we look at the y value, and it looks to be, here's 0 and here's negative 1, it looks to be right in the middle of that. So negative 0 0.5. So I know, because I've solved this another way, that the exact solution really is negative 3.5, negative 0.5. But what I'm trying to impress on you is that if you didn't solve it any other way and you had no idea what the solution is, then if you made a very small mistake in drawing your lines, then you, you, you would have a hard time finding out what the actual solution is. Is it 3.5 or is it 3.44? Is it negative 0.5 or is it negative 0.49? 
You, you really can't read on a, on a graph with, with lines this compressed. It would be really hard to read the solution exactly off, right? But for this, I actually know the solution's correct, so I did draw it as good as I can, and the solution to this intersection is, uh, the solution is 3.5, negative uh, 0.5. But in all, and so we say it's consistent. Right? So the reason that uh, I'm doing this one last is because it's the only one I'm doing where we've graphed the solution and we got decimal values or fractions. It's really, you know, some fraction here and some fraction here, right? So I'm trying to impress upon you the idea that graphing systems of equations is a really great way to figure out what the solution is. It's the easiest way. I mean, it's a pain to deal with graphs, but it's the, it's the most bulletproof way. You know how to graph these things, and then you know how to look at where they cross and you read it off of there. It's great. The problem is, if your intersection point is anywhere off somewhere in the weeds, it's hard to read the exact value. So what accuracy do you need your solution to? So graphing is amazing. That's the first method of solving systems of equations that we've talked about. But we have other methods. There's actually lots of methods of solving systems of equations. Right? The next method we're going to learn in the next section is going to be called solving systems of equations by substitution. We're not going to graph anything. We're just going to find the uh, solution by substitution. And I'll explain what all that means later. And then later on we have another method called solving systems of equations by addition. And then much, 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 much later, like many, many chapters later, we'll solve systems of equations again using matrices which I know you don't even know what matrices are, but it's another tool. I'll teach you what it is, and you will solve systems of equations using that. And there's actually two or three different ways to solve systems of equations using matrices. And you might say, why are we learning all these ways? It's because I told you before. Linear systems of equations like this is one of the most important things in math. Many, many, many real systems can be solved with these simple lines. So what you're learning now is very, very important and very useful. So follow me on to the next lesson once you understand the concept here. And we will start solving systems of equations by substitution. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.